Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very exciting episode of Living Theosophy. This is recorded earlier, but we will be there in the chat for your comments. Thank you so much for being here. So exciting. These are some of my favorite people on the planet. Welcome, please, to our episode featuring the Virtual Center of Theosophical Studies. And with us today, we have, look at the smiles. I love them so much. We have <laughs> Lyndon S. Smith is up there in the corner there. And we also have Tapashri Ganguly is in the house. Uh, the director of the Virtual Center for Theosophical Studies, the one and only Luke Michael Ironside. We have Ananda Winter is also here, beautiful smiling face. Nancy Bragan is in the house. Philadelphia is where she's coming from. Everybody knows Nancy and Arnie Narendran. I don't think he's frozen. Is he frozen? <laughs> no, 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 I can't hear. I can hear, I can hear. <laughs> Arnie Narendran coming in from India. It is late for him. Thank you for being with us, all of you. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Virtual Center for Theosophical Studies. This is a online digital um, grouping. This is a community where you can study and gather. And there's also service. We have a service to bring theosophy out into the world. So this was Luke's baby, and it still is Luke's baby. And I've been a part of the team for the last year. And I wanted to bring them on here on Living Theosophy because they are the epitome of living theosophy. And they're bringing it out into the world. So one year ago, about around this time, maybe a little bit later, Luke Ironside came up with the idea for the virtual center. And I was going to see, Luke, if you tell us as to what it was that inspired you to bring the virtual center together. What was it that you thought were, there was a need? What was your was your story for the beginning? Right, well, the, the story for how I came up with the idea was really in considering the first object of the Theosophical Society, which is to be a nucleus of the universal brotherhood of humanity. And one thing I noticed was that the internet is an excellent tool to work towards the realization of that goal. And so what we have is, is these excellent lodges and sections and theosophical groups around the world that, that do amazing things, that have wonderful people working on wonderful projects, but all too often are disconnected from other groups working on similar projects and, and other groups that are having meetings about similar topics. And so what I thought was it would be nice to connect the dots, to bring them all together, or to provide a platform where these different groups doing similar things could come together in a, a shared space. There was also a secondary uh, objective there, which was really the isolated people around the world, the isolated students of theosophy who may not be near a group or a center of of the Theosophical Society, I thought it'd be a great way to also bring them into the fold and to give them an opportunity to contribute. Well, this is the this is the communication of the future. This is where everybody's at. Everybody's on their phones. Everybody's scrolling through the internet. And this is where uh, the meetings can take place and the information can be shared. So he reached out to us. He reached out to a few of us and said, I've got this idea. Let's come together and let's bring it out into the world. So we have uh, some of the big players here. Well, not players, players. Arnie Narendran is our education director. And Arnie out of India, he's been a theosophist since forever and he knows everybody and Arnie would you like to say a few words about your feelings on the BCTS and about uh, just you in general would you mind please uh, thank you Anne and uh, I would like to go a little backward to 2014 when I first came to know about Luke after he came to Adyar and believe me I, I could see the spark in him at yeah. that point of time and immediately we started to correspond with each other. And that was the time when he came to understand that I was running a youth center in Adyar, mm -hmm. the only one in Adyar's history during the time of John Coates. And uh, I had even sent an article to him. So he got an entire idea of how this is going to work. I told him it's not going to be an easy play because the whole concept of getting off a separate youth center was very, very difficult for John Coates to uh, put it, roll it out. In fact, he had a lot of uh, opposition, but somehow he and Nathaniel Altman, who lives in New York, and uh, he's a writer and an author, he was uh, instrumental, and they somehow found me a little bit of uh, right billing there to take care of the manager of the center. So I was residing in Adia for a year, uh, I mean, reporting to uh, President John Coates, and he was actually a, a darling of a person, I would say. And Adyar one year gave me a great footage 
uh, for the rest of my life. For me, theosophy, I understood in ADR, but I could actually, for me, theosophy has been um, an illumined pathway to my life. And I would actually say this is very, very important for young people to get into theosophy yes. because my life has been a fantastic example of how I could calibrate on my knowledge and divine wisdom and um, spread it around the world. In the banking industry, I had been able to be, I mean, try to spread the divine knowledge of universal brotherhood. We were, I was always talking, I was a team leader, uh, fortunately, ever since I joined the bank. I rose up to be India head and Middle East head of the organization. So I was a great motivator in the organization. And I was also, people would ask me, how is it that we have never seen you angry at all? I said, anger comes out of ignorance. And love comes out of wisdom, you know. Yes. So, so I even had a tough uh, communist uh, workers uh, come and oppose uh, me. But I would melt away their hearts. And I uh, had this great uh, incident in Calcutta when my boss had to escape Calcutta because the communists had come and they were against uh, computerization in India. They, did, they said, you're going to take away our jobs. And I think that was the moment in the banking industry for me when I could actually soften their hearts and tell them, that we need to go with the change yes. or Calcutta will be left behind. Yes. So, you know, this, this kind of uh, uh, rolling out theosophical ideals and actually practicing them. So I, the, I really like your idea of living theosophy because the first stage is to understand the fundamentals of theosophy mm. and universal brotherhood. The second stage is to understand the differences of different wisdom schools and religions. That's the second objective. But the most important is the third, where we all have inherent strength, our thought power, yeah. our compassion, our altruistic traits. All this come out at the third point. And the fourth is to live an example and be a, a theosophist in the real sense of making a difference in your own life and the life of others. So Duke was actually, um, ha happened to be like what Arjuna and Krishna was working on. I found Luke to be the, the future of uh, uh, the uh, theosophical movement because uh, I knew from he's going to take it up from where it was. Initially, there was, of course, uh, a little bit of uh, a stagnation, a, a very long pause button, but the masters are always there looking for the ideal situation. So the VCT, the virtual center, is not an a outcome of this uh, COVID uh, pandemic at all. It is the genesis is much, much before. And Luke has certainly got a big role to play. And I'm sure this is only the beginning. Oh, Thank you. Bless you. Thank you, Arnie. That is well said, well said. And absolutely, I can remember Nancy and I were talking about this, looking at Luke um, when I was uh, over the last 10 years, seeing this young man uh, online and seeing him doing different things. I thought, oh my God, there is a young inspirational person coming up through the, the theosophical ranks. And I thought, who is this person? What an honor it is to be able to work with all of you. And uh, Luke, I do believe your future looks very, very bright. And also as he's heading this, he's a young man. Do you mind if we talk about your age, Luke? Can we say that? How old are you? Sure, well, I'm 27. I know, I love and... it, I love that. <laughs> Well, it's just, well, I think it's, it's <laughs> yeah. all an act of service, though, isn't yeah. it? You know, the, yeah. the way I see it is uh, it, it's great to be a part of a community where everyone has something to offer. And I, I think that as philosophers, we should all try to offer whatever we have and whatever capacity we may just towards the betterment of the theosophical community as a whole. So as far as I see it, I, I've always just wanted to give whatever I have, uh, whatever service I may towards the theosophical community. And if that helps, then I'm, I'm happy, you know, I, I just want to be of service. Thank you. It's so refreshing to see uh, at 27, you sure have your, your stuff together, but to see you coming through, I remember watching you give a talk. I can't remember it was Oxford or something. I can't remember something. I saw you online. I thought oh, that gave me hope for the future because I thought if there's young people coming in, then this will go on. To me, this is the Holy Grail. And I remember last year watching you do a series with Nancy who she'd organized this. And uh, this was just so fantastic. And this is right before COVID hit. And then we kind of uh, had you guys on the show. I was able to have both of you on and then we were able to move forward. Nancy Bragan, if you don't know who Nancy is, uh, she knows 
everybody and she's extremely involved. She's a dedicated, absolutely diehard for service and humanity uh, coming out of Philadelphia. Here she comes. She's our PR director here for the Virtual Center for Theosophical Studies. And she's also very involved with Theosophical Order of Service. Nancy Bragan is with us. Hi there, Nancy. Nancy, um, <clears throat> we spoke last year momentarily, just for a little bit, about uh, the future of theosophy going out online into the digital world. I wanted to get your thoughts on that, being in PR for as long as you've been. I wanted to get your thoughts on taking theosophy out of the library and lodges and into the digital platforms, please. Yeah. So um, I've always felt that theosophy is like the world's best kept secret. Yeah. And, um, this, this ancient wisdom could help so many people right now, yeah. but they don't know about it. So with the pandemic, we have the perfect storm. We have a global village sitting at their computers. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Let's reach out to them. And that's why I was so excited when, um, when Luke, when I heard that you started this um, endeavor, um, we can reach everyone when when they need it right now and you know we everyone's been doing such a fabulous job of, of getting the ancient wisdom out when it's really needed so i'm really, really excited and I'm, I'm especially excited about reaching the youth yes. i've been exposed to a lot of the young people around the world through this um endeavor and um, I've got to tell you right now that theosophy is in good hands. I mean, this, this generation, they've got it together. They have it together. They're, they're bright, they're smart, they're creative, they're involved. And um, I'm just excited. I'm, I'm really excited about the future. Oh, thank you so much for your service as well. All that you do give to the this society or our group and all the other societies. I know that you've been a theosophist for a long time, for a while now. Um, what do you see as far as uh, for the, the youth? We have what 45 and under is what we're saying. Uh, but if we're looking, if we're able to bring them in young, you know, bring theosophy down to, I mean, primary school and all that, how can we how can we, if somebody's watching this right now, and Ananda, I was going to come to you after this real quick, so I don't want you to feel on the spot, but I'm coming. Um, I wanted to see, Nancy, what your thoughts are to, as we're targeting the young, what are your thoughts about bringing theosophy out to the very young? Well, let's, let's reach them um, where they are, you know, um, all of the, the various groups around the world. Um, Ananda and can certainly talk about that um, some more and, and taps, but let's let's go and let's reach them. Okay, they're they're on their computers constantly. Okay, yeah. perfect. So let's go and reach them where they are, and um, that that's our best hope, I think. Yep, they're playing video games. They're on their computers, and they're not going to be going to the libraries. They're not going to go to lodges, but they're going to go online. And they are all, I mean, connected. We A majority of our planet does have internet service and more and more are coming on. We're coming up to 8 billion and we are all right there together. We're right now together all over the world. We have Brazil, we have the UK, we have India and the US with us right now. So going to Brazil, Ananda, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I just want to give you a little prep. Just wanted to talk here, this young, beautiful, amazing face, this amazing heart as well. Uh, Ananda, I met you through the youth, the young theosophists, um, the other groups as well that are working doing the same kind of thing. Um, being uh, young and involved, do you see a future? Do you see them embracing theosophy or do you see some of the old religions coming in and kind of not looking or what do you see now that you're in it um, with these young people of today? What are your thoughts on theosophy for the youth and your personal? Uh, I think that I see First of all, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for being here and sharing um, these perspectives. But I think that among the youth, uh, a lot of old religions or fundamentalist religions are getting stronger. I, talking from Brazil, I feel it a lot. So I think that it's really, it's it's really good to see theosophy getting stronger and. So I feel like when we have the opportunity to feel that there are more young people with us, we get uh, encouraged. So this is this is what works for me. And I think that for a lot of people, it works like this. So 
we started having these young international meetings last year and I felt like this gave me and so, so many others this impulse to study, to have other meetings. And we, we didn't stop having meetings until now. So we are for almost a year having um, online gatherings. And I think this is very, this give, gives me a lot of hope and inspiration. So I, I'm very new in this uh, online things. I was more active on like face-to-face uh, uh, -face meetings, but I think that now that we have this opportunity, we have to go for it and learn whatever we can learn to have more meetings like this. That's why I came a little later to the virtual center, but when the invite came to me, I felt like that's the way. So I'm here trying to learn more and I'm still in the beginning. Oh, thank you. Welcome to the team. You are such an asset and we appreciate you, sweetheart. Thank you for being there, doing all that you do. Um, Ananda is a, a relatively new member of the team. This team is growing. If you are looking to be of service, if you'd like to team up with the VCTS, you are certainly welcome. Please hit the website, which is theosophy.online. Uh, they're going to be needing some assistance if you can in, in social media, if you have those kind of skills, digital skills, anything, because this is uh, something that's going to be going and growing uh, through the future. And we have two other beautiful faces here. We have Tapestry Ganguly and Lyndon S. Smith. And I'd like to go to you guys now um, really quick. Um, they're beloved, uh, cherished friends. Lyndon and I met on this channel, as a matter of fact. He was listening to the 14 lessons in uh, Oriental Occultism, Yogi philosophy, actually. And he said, he sent me a message. And he said, there's something about these books. I said, I know there's something about these books. <laughs> they were the entrance. I think Luke might have said the Kabbalion was one of your first uh, texts that was also a William Walker Atkinson text along with Anna Kingsford and Edward, I can't remember his last name. Um, but anyway, yeah, these are like the, um, the entrance to theosophy uh, and they literally changed our lives. I believe it is the holy grail and I, it, you don't have to belong to anything. You don't have to pay anybody. It's all self-application. This is ancient divine science and divine knowledge that can be applied and change your life and change the world. Lyndon, would you like to share a little bit about, um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I just want to see if you want to share a little bit about your own journey, what theosophy, we've talked about this on the channel before, what you yeah. see for the future for theosophy as these young people are hopefully going to take this and embrace it. What do you see for theosophy in the future? I think there's a, a huge movement now with the yeah. environmental issues and also um, veganism, the rise of vegetarianism, yeah. and also um, mental health, uh, LGBTQ plus, mm -hmm. uh, lots of things that are uh, mental health, lots of things that were not even in my generation of the mid 70s, even discussed or considered as mainstream now. Um, the big change with the materialistic view, I think that the, the younger generations have a very different view of that. And I think that a lot of these values are actually aligned very much with theosophy. Um, and I think that what's happening is there's, there seems to be a seismic shift with young people that you talk about stuff to young people and you think they get it. They just get this, that we're one, that we're connected. Um, so that's your environmental issue. Uh, they also talk about animal rights thing, animal rights things that we, we didn't really consider in the 70s and 80s massively. I'm not saying that vegetarianism or veganism didn't, didn't exist then but it's certainly becoming more mainstream and people are more conscious of these things. It's like a latent consciousness mm -hmm. that's becoming manifest through mainstream. The hand is forced almost with the invasion of plastic and the degradation of the natural world. And people are having to look actually at themselves and think, do you know, do I need that bag of pears swathed in plastic? Do I need a net of oranges? Do I really need this the, this packaging? Mm -hmm. Very fundamental but small shifts of bring it, bringing about a seismic change in how we view the natural world. Mm -hmm. I think the future of theosophy is if you look at the mainstream education system in the UK and probably in the West, um, if, we, if you put the religious traditions aside, there is no reference at all in your education to the things that are talked about in theosophy, 
the the ideas of oneness, the ideas of unity, the ideas of love, the ideas of cooperation uh, rather than competition. There is no reference to that in mainstream schooling. There's no reference to it at all. And people are going through the education system, coming out the other end, and they've got no, there's no, there's an X and Y. You know, they've got an idea left and right, but there's no up and down. There's no context. Mm. So to take an example to illustrate, they might say, well, um, being successful is to exploit. So whether it's a workforce or, 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 or whatever, to get a maximum profit. But they don't realize that in that, imbued in that ideology, is there cohesion, cooperation, mm. unity. And I think there is a change. I sense there's a change, that there's a, an understanding that there's not only an X and Y on this diagram, there's also another context. Um, so I think the future's changing. I think that people are looking differently at, at the traditions, the religions, and there's a thirst. I think that people want to understand what is my position in the greater whole? What am I looking at? Why am I here? What is that starry heaven that I see at night? Yes, yes. Um, why has it lost its awe? Where did the awe and the beauty go when it's been reduced to binary algorithm? Um, what is, you know, the song inside is lost. Anyway, I'll shut up now because I'm going no, on about it. I love that's, it. That's I just... how I see this. Um, there's, a, there's a deeper yearning, a context to this modern age, which is missing. And I think that people, when you talk to them, they, it's there. So well said, so well said. All of these, these faces and these hearts, these are like-minded, compassionate souls that are willing to be of selfless service to humanity. And that's why I love them so much. And that's why I wanted to be able to feature this amazing group. It is called the Virtual Center for Theosophical Studies. And it's only been around not even a year yet, but it's growing and it's going to, it's to target the younger generations, but even the young at heart, you can certainly be a part of it. Again, if you'd like to check them out, they are on Facebook. You can find them at the Virtual Center for Theosophical Philosophical Studies or the VCTS. We're on there on, on Instagram and Twitter. And theosophy.online is the name of our website. And I want to thank our volunteers who have come along so far to help us with all of this. It's all, this is all an effort of volunteers. Everybody is suiting up and showing up out of love for humanity. No one is getting paid. The only thing we have to sell is compassion. That's it. So um, Taps is up next. Um, Taps is a mathematician and a statistician. She's been on this channel before. She is an absolute favorite, and she brings in science and mathematics into um, these ancient principles. And um, I just absolutely love everything that she does, and I believe that she's got quite a future. She's looking at possibly, dare I say it, I'll say it again because we talked about it on this channel before, taking the secret doctrine and putting it into uh, practical mathematics that can be understood because this is divine science and divine uh, quantum physics. She's bringing in the science to it. So Taps, would you like to share a little bit about your ideas for the future of theosophy through the scientific and mathematical side, if you wish, or anything you'd like to share on? Because I know you, mm -hmm. she also has a channel called D, D-H-I. I'm gonna put that in the uh, description down below um, where she's also bringing in this love and compassion into the world. And that's her service. She's called to service. And um, would you like to share about um, math, theosophy? Yeah, and sure. Please. First of all, I'll I'll have to say that this is like, this is the channel that's made me a superstar. So sure. thank you. Sure. I'm happy, happy to be back here again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to pick up from what Lyndon just said about this context where he said that context is everything and context is everything. And I'm going to put in this mathematical framework to it saying that by till date um, in very recent, uh, even in very recent past, we have not been actually looking at the context and dependencies. We have been looking at things very independently. Um, and this dependence net is what theosophy is to me in the mathematical context. And this dependency exists across people. So we can say we are independent, you know, we are quite, you know, I'm independent of this and we are very independent. But in reality, we're all connected. There is a dependency that connects us all. And that dependency can be modeled mathematically. So once you account for that dependency, whatever is left is your individual self and your individual needs, your individual perspective. And then you anchor it back on this human, you know, this humanity network to draw your inspirations, which is a theosophical network, which could be other wisdom, you know, that you have, because that is exactly what the entire network is. So in my work, um, my in my day job as a statistician, um, till date, I have had this huge 
uh, debate about, no, we look at things independently, you increase this and this increases, this decreases and so on. But now I can see this shift and I am bringing in this shift uh, through the work that I do in my day job. And a major part of it is also in the, in the secret doctrine and in theosophical things. So I look at it as all, it's, it's all connected basically. It's just that you put the numbers and the context, define the context. There are different kinds of context. You can put it all together and whatever is left, you would see at the end of it, there is very little that's left that that's I, that's the ego, right? And everything else is modeled and it's all dependent. So why is it that you feel that you're so isolated and you know you have to do things independently? We can all do things together. No, no, nobody is like high or low, you know, it's like we are all in the same thing together. So, and that is a mathematical framework in my head. And that's what I want to do with the secret doctrine, but it's just not a time to do it. But <laughs> but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> eventually but but that change is happening now i think post covid that change has become more rapid mm -hmm. and because i also am i do regular yoga and my yoga teacher says that we are in this aquarian age where we have to go inside and we have to you know uh, you know get our answers from what we are so i see a deep a leaning into the theosophical texts mm -hmm. yes but i see it from a mathematical standpoint where it is like where we do it in the work that we do, like me, for example, like in my day job, that's the work that I do. Everything is dependent and I keep on harping the same thing over and over again. Now people listen to me and they're like, okay, you know, yeah, that's, that makes sense. But I said the same thing like five years ago, but nobody really understood that. Mm. Or, you know, I was like, okay, you know, it's not, that doesn't make sense. But today it makes sense. So there is a shift. Um, and I think it's just going to grow more um, into the conscious space, I guess, um, I mean, put it that way. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Your passion, your enthusiasm, your dedication. Uh, it's just so wonderful to be able to work alongside you um, because you understand and you get it when people go, what's theosophy? And, <laughs> and, you know, how do you say that? How come I've never heard about that? And then you have the religions coming in and saying da, 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 da. But now there's more and more and more coming in and understanding this. And I was going to do just a couple little playful things just to see, because I, I think that Theosophy doesn't have to be so stoic and serious. It can be, it's in real life. So laughter and joy and all that kind of stuff. I was just going to go around the room and see if we could all give one little sentence or one little word or two words of what you would describe theosophy to someone who's never heard of it before. I'll go first. Holy grail. That's what I would say it is. Lyndon, you're next. Uh, complete um, unity. Good. Okay, Caps. I would say love. Yes, yes. You've got another that. word, Taps. <laughs> you got two I, words. I, I, have to, you don't have to, give, have to give two words. You don't have to. I'll say, I'll, I'll give another word. I'll say kindness. Kindness. You okay. need to, you know, you know being kind <laughs> is quite important. That's like, yeah, three Never. words, being kind and love. Don't, I was going to say, Arnie's coming up next. He's got to do all this calculation to figure out what's left um, because we've okay. got some really good things. So Arnie, actually, let's take you out of the hot seat. What would you say is... Uh, one or two words, if somebody goes, what's theosophy? You got one or two words to answer and go. No answer is wrong and you can repeat us if you need to. I would actually uh, think it boils down to altruism. That's uh, the one main word that I would actually go for it. And the, the other word would be truth. Yeah. Truth is the sense of everything this yeah. word. So these two. Very well said, very well said. <laughs> The other three are waiting, going, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if I, because it is, you know, you do, how many words can you come up with for these beautiful truths? Uh, but Luke, you're up next. Just a couple words. Somebody's like, what's theosophy? Two words, one word, tell them. Wisdom in action. Yes, very well I done. Ananda and Nash which, is, here. which is altruism, which is yeah, another way of true. saying altruism. No, it's, yes. it's great, but I'm sure you have this experience in your everyday life. People go, you're so excited about it. What is it? And how come I've never heard about it? And I have these conversations all the time. And so it's so much fun to be able to have friends that get it. So uh, Ananda, I'm going to have Nancy come up last uh, because saving the best for last. Here she comes. Ananda, give me, not that you're not the best, Ananda. I'm just trying to make Nancy feel good as she thinks of it in a description. Um, but um, Ananda, can you, somebody says, theosophy, what is it? Two words, one word, what do you got? 
for me is a loving family. Oh, it's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Well, because anybody who's watching, I know you're going to be asking if you if you come across this channel, you're going to say, "What is Theosophy?" Now you've got all these folks who are students of Theosophy answering this question, and Nancy coming in with you. What would you say? I'm sure you get this question. What is your answer? Um, Arnie took my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Arnie, I, I was going to say it's it's truth with a capital oh. T. Yes, it is. Um, and um, maybe a, a, another um, angle to it would be um, um, it's an inner compass. Yes, yes. Inner compass. Yeah. Absolutely. That's good. a really good way to say it. Sorry, Lennon, go ahead. No, it's, it, they're all good words, aren't they? They're all, they are. It's such a hard subject sometimes to talk about, isn't I it? I know. To, to get it into, uh, but yeah, those words have captured it. But you have uh, all of this, we, we have empathy for each other, we have understanding, but we're all doing the exact same thing, all from different parts of the world. And it is so wonderful to be sitting here with you knowing that you get the same, uh, you get the religions coming in. The yesterday, was it yesterday or day before, I had one that was just really hammering me with why I wasn't accepting Jesus Christ as my personal savior and all that kind of stuff. And all the stuff we need to explain, I know you're nodding, you guys understand. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, the magazine was named Lucifer, calm down. And so, but you guys all get it. And that's so wonderful. So if you're watching this uh, video here on YouTube, um, now, the Remember, there's way more than the physical world, and there's more than what we know so far. In these organized religions, people are starting to come outside of those and figure out where are the commonalities. And that's what theosophy is. That's how I try to describe it. But isn't it wonderful to be able to have folks that understand and are carrying this out into the world? We don't have, I don't have anything to gain except being able to share it with you. It's helped me so much. I believe it will help you too. And yeah. I know that that's why they're doing it too. So let me ask you guys this. Um, and we won't let Arnie steal Nancy's answer. Let's go to Nancy first. <laughs> Nancy, why do you want to share theosophy with people in the world? Why? We're at a point in the world right now where um, there, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on. I mean, mm -hmm. we're really um, it could be so much help to people yes. in the world right now, and yes. and that's the main reason I want to get it out there. Yeah. Um, again, it's like you know we have this best kept secret, and mm -hmm. uh, everything that's going on right now. Um, theosophy can help with, with all of these issues. So um, I think it's so important that the job that everyone here is doing and in, in getting it out to, to the people and, and showing them, hey, you know, this is, this is theosophy. It can help you. It can help you with life. It yep. can help you with everything. It's ancient wisdom. It isn't anything new. It's, it's not a technique. Um, it's, it's available to everyone yep. to use right now to just to help you with, with all of the major crises that are going on in the world right now. Yep. Amen. That's a great answer. And absolutely. Um, Luke, would you like to expand on that? Why? Why are we doing this? Why are we taking this out? Why are we spending all these hours and hours and hours online sharing this information because of? Luke? Theosophy connects the dots. And I think because of that, it provides a reason for many things which otherwise would remain a mystery. And I think theosophy is there whether or not, whether or not one, it is shared with someone, but it, it may not be recognized. As Nancy said, it's a secret. It's, it's there, but it's, it's not instantly recognizable. And I think what we have is this wisdom in life coming from various different sources. It may be coming from religion. It may be coming from science. It may be coming from philosophy and it may be coming from our daily experiences and from our friends and our family and our colleagues and from our work. Um, but what we don't have is the connection between all these various things. What we're lacking is the web that binds them all. And what theosophy is, is that connector. It brings together all these distinct fields and areas and sources of wisdom to show that really that they, they are all from the same place they're all from the same fundamental source 
Yes, they are. Oh, well said, well said. And, and I wanted to make sure everybody gets a chance to share about why you're doing it. Um, Arnie, I wanted to ask you a little bit of a twist to this question is that some of the older school theosophists say you're not supposed to take it out. They need to come to you, but we're taking it out. I believe solidly and firmly that we need to take it out to show it to other people. We're not trying to convert anybody. I'm just a public service announcement for theosophy, but there are some old school theosophists that say we're not supposed to do that. What are your thoughts on that, Arnie? If you see the genesis of the theosophical movement, the very purpose of Madame Blavatsky to honor the divine wisdom and bring forth to the entire world is because the consciousness of the universe had to change. So this was a great trigger, if you see in the history of uh, social thought, in the, the history of the philosophy of life. Mm. And for the first time, theosophy looked at it at a very scientific point of view, because earlier, people believed that Oriental philosophy was a made up story. And here was Blavatsky, through the help of the masters, telling the world, this is a scientific truth, and you need to really experience it. And now the latest Nobel Prize for Physics has uh, confirmed what science was so far believing that the, this is the only universe that exists and existed. But now it is also talking about a previous universe which exists, which Theosophy which, uh, Theos has been talking 100 years before. Mm -hmm. So one by one, what Blavatsky has been talking about is being scientifically validated but very slowly, number one. Number two, you asked, uh, the other question is also very important. Why Theosophy should reach the world? This pandemic has brought, uh, brought, brought forth one very, very important point that we cannot live in a fractured society. We need to think together as one humanity. We need to think together as one universe, which also means the animal and the plant kingdom. So this is now a reality which the world has understood and we cannot talk about nationalism and subnationalism you know and uh, embargoes and uh, trade uh, trade embargoes and such uh, uh, what do you call inhuman activities that uh, the human mind has been working out over these ages so the transformation process will start now as the age of Aquarius has now begun the inward transformation will bring forth an external transformation of the entire universe and Josephus have in a big role to play. In fact, if you read uh, books on Theosophy, it says in 2700, Theosophy will be the biggest think tank of human consciousness. Woo! That's now, yeah, 2700. <laughs> Theosophy is going to be the human think tank of human consciousness. We are not aware of it, but this is the, the truth that's going to come. And we're all going to play uh, uh, whatever role that we can to the best extent in our lifetime. That's it. Oh, thank you. I know it is ancient and it is the future. It is not a religion. If you're watching, don't freak out about that. I get that all the time. It's not a religion. It's actually quite the opposite. It is the fundamental truth that is in all the world's religion, sciences, and philosophies. Look at the commonalities. Look at the commonalities. But there's still a lot of people that are programmed for what they were taught, their parents were taught, and then they're frozen in this time that there's an us and them mentality. Theosophy is not exclusive. It's inclusive. It includes everybody, everybody. Yeah. So I wanted to ask um, Ananda, actually, I wanted to see what do you think about obstacles, about what you think might be, what we can, do you think for the youth of today, since you are the youth of today, what do you think we might need to change or do that, um, just your own thoughts, there's no wrong answer, sweetheart, at all. What would you see in your circles and in your experience? Uh, what are the obstacles for theosophy going out into the world today? Just from your own observation, please. Um, I think that this answers that this answer answers also the other question about oh, okay. yes, yes. why why we should bring philosophy to the world because I think that the the main obstacles that I see are this these feelings of separateness mm -hmm. and I think they are getting stronger. We thought that they are they were leaving us, but they're not. And I think that in this moment that we we are living, this is. This is a huge obstacle and it is so important to bring theosophy and this feeling of family, a universal loving family, not this kind of family who 
don't accept the difference among its members, but a loving family and a respect, respecting, respectful family. Mm -hmm. So I think that the main obstacle now is to share this word, word of unity and of respect. I think that it is so basic and it is a, such a huge challenge right now. So um, I think that I feel a little sad to say something like respect is an obstacle because that's <laughs> it. It, it. We should have already had it. So, but I think that we're back to this place. And so that's why I think that theosophy is really important today for us to have this growing feeling of being a family. Ah, oh, thank you. Very well said, very well said. And respect, it's true, because if we don't stop doing what we're doing, we might do human things like the churches have done. We go into an us and them, ours right. is great, yours is bad, and we're competing now with fellow theosophists, which doesn't make any sense. We got to learn to get along with everybody. That's the whole universal brotherhood thing. We need to be able to work alongside everybody for the best interests of all and to ease the unnecessary suffering of all beings on our planet. So, um, and I know you know this, and that's why they're here for the Virtual Center of Theosophical Studies. What we're doing is getting to know who these amazing volunteers, their volunteers are dedicating their time to get these teachings out into the world via digital platforms. They're coming in from all over the world. We're looking at Linda S. Smith. We have Tapashri Ganguly, our director, Luke Michael Ironside, Arnie Narendran, who's staying up very late to be with us from India, Nancy out of Philadelphia, Nancy Bragan, and we have Ananda Winter out of Brazil. Uh, this is the core team of the VCTS. If you'd like to find out more, if you'd like to be a part of it, give them a drop them a line, give them a visit at theosophy.online is the website. They also have a YouTube page. I'm going to link that down below and uh, you can watch the videos and the presentations. And I was going to talk about the future of what's coming up. There's been lots of things happening over the last year. We had our very first uh, Theosophical Order of Service Symposium this month, and we've got lots of amazing speakers coming through, lots of projects. Um, and I wanted to touch base with Luke, our director, on what is happening in the near future and in the distant future for the Virtual Center for Theosophical Studies. Luke Michael Ironside, take it away. All right, well, what we've found is that we have an increasing number of events and projects and so on, all, all coming together as our team expands, as more people get involved, and that's it's really great. So what we started off with um, last year and what's been going every month since then was this this program of monthly speakers. And so what we have is speakers from different sections of the Theosophical Society all around the world uh, being invited to speak once a month at the virtual center. And this has provided a platform for different perspectives on a variety of topics. We, we welcome the speakers to speak on whatever topic they feel will be of benefit to the theosophical community. So we don't have a set curriculum or set topics. We like to keep it broad and, and bring in as many perspectives as possible. And so that's something we have happening every month on the last Saturday of the month. Uh, we've also recently launched the Secret Doctrine Study Group, which is happening in collaboration with the Adamant Lodge of the Theosophical Society in Russia. So that's a great new project, which is also happening once a month. We had a TOS symposium, which was a great success, where we brought together a panel of speakers and representatives of the TOS from around the world who shared their views on the relevance of service, theosophical service, and how this is actually being put into action in projects around the world. We had our very own Nancy Bragan at this event, and we are planning subsequent TOS symposiums uh, for the future. Some other upcoming events which are starting to, to fall into sort of starting to come about uh, an education focused program we'd like to invite some speakers to talk about theosophical education mm -hmm. and how that's being taking place in various schools and other centers around the world and we'd also like to have a sort of inter-theosophical uh, symposium with different theosophical groups and something that Anne just mentioned before was the the importance in theosophy 
of avoiding a us and them perspective. And it's important to realize that uh, while we are a part of the Theosophical Society Agile, there are other Theosophical groups and they're doing some great work as well. And I mean, personally, I'm also a member of the Theosophical Society Pasadena. I'm a member of the Temple of the People, a Theosophical community in California. And so there are, there are other Theosophical groups doing wonderful work and we'd love to bring them together to share on our platform as well about the importance of unity and collaboration and the, the fundamental spirit of interconnectedness mm -hmm. that's at the heart of theosophy. Very well said. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I love it. I love you guys. And I wanted to be able to give whoever's going to be able to watch this video a chance to get to know the VCTS team. So I've done something a little bit silly here. I've had these questions here. It's called the lightning round. So before we get back into business, it's literally a way to get to know you. And I don't want to freak anybody out. It's just silliness. So let's start with Lyndon. No, let's start with Luke. Luke, cake or pie? You just have to pick one. Do you prefer cake or pie? I'll go with cake. Okay, cake. Okay. All right, <laughs> Lyndon. Uh, Lyndon, uh, would you rather climb a mountain or jump from a plane? Climb a mountain. <laughs> Good. All right, Arnie. Let's see. Arnie, <laughs> would you rather have to run everywhere or skip everywhere? I would rather run everywhere. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. I've got. I'm viewing you skipping <laughs> everywhere, Arnie. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't skip with my big with my big belly. I can't skip. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ananda, would you rather breathe like Darth Vader or talk like Yoda? Talk like Yoda. Yeah, that's a good answer. <laughs> Yoda, you talk. There you go. <laughs> the, um, okay. Um, uh, if you could be any mythical creature, uh, Tabs, which one would you be? A mythical creature. Go. No pressure. Which one would I be? Yeah, I yeah. have no options. Everyone got options. Everyone got options. That's unfair. <laughs> well, I, could pick them for you. I could pick them for you. You, I was thinking you could have any of them, any mythical creature. Uh, I, I don't know really. I, I wouldn't want. Huh? Would you want unicorn? I could be the unicorn, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I like options. You know, if you. I know. Options, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, all right. Let me see. <laughs> Um, okay, would you rather wake up to an air horn blowing in your ear every day or wake up having to run four miles immediately? Air horn blowing in my ear every day. <laughs> That's a stupid question. <laughs> I told you it's silly. Okay, and Nancy, let's see, we're going to save one for Nancy. Um, let's see, hang on one second. Um, can you say, good eye, mate, in an Australian accent? Nancy, can <laughs> you say, good eye, mate? in an Australian accent. She, your mic's what was, off. <laughs> what was the question again? It's not a question. It's a statement. <laughs> I, need you to say, I need you to say, good eye, mate, in an Australian accent. It's just to get to know you. Go. She's My perplexed. That's a tough one. Accent <laughs> is going to come through no matter how I say it. So, <laughs> Nancy, you sound Australian to me anyway. Good eye, mate. Um, okay, well, I. Um, <laughs> you want, okay, um, you don't have to do that one. Okay, would you rather have no elbows or no knees? No <laughs> knees. <laughs> really? Oh, come wow. on. Guess, how would you get about? I know she's got no knees, but she's able to do all these things too. <laughs> Oh my God, I love this so much. This was so much fun. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Virtual Center for Theosophical Studies, remember that comedy and laughter are, and, and all of that, music and laughter, these are parts of life. Theosophy is not something that has to be stoic and just one day a week, one hour a day um, in your Sunday best. It's about real life. And as you heard these beautiful souls talk to you about how it is applied in everyday life to change your life. And it doesn't have to come, it's not gonna come from anybody else. It doesn't have to be at a certain space. You just find it. If this interests you, you can look up theosophy.online and you can find out more about the BCTS, or if you'd like, just go and Google it and find out about it. Theosophia, Theos Gods, Sophia Wisdom, Sacred Wisdom. This is ancient, timeless knowledge 
and science that belongs to all and solely to none. And this is a fantastic group of dedicated volunteers that are doing this to bring this out into the world, into the digital world, so it can reach the youth of tomorrow to save the world, uh, the youth of today to save the world of tomorrow. So is there anything that any of you would like to say before we think of Nancy with no knees? She has no knees. Um, <laughs> would you like to uh, say anything before we close? Luke, any closing thoughts? Arnie, Ananda, Nancy, Lyndon Taps, anybody? No, no closing comments. For me. No closing comments? Well, well, Anne, I think this is a, a beginning. We are looking at uh, new ways of uh, providing content for philosophy because uh, we understand uh, the new language is essentially one which is very universal. And uh, as you said, it's going to be an inclusive language of love, compassion, and giving to each other. So that's the kind of uh, message. And I'm sure, for example, meditation uh, has really brought in a big revolution. Everywhere you go today, you have mindfulness workshops. Yeah. So it, people have come to understand it's not the body alone that's going to take them along. You need the mind and the soul to be nurtured also. So this is going to be the message for the future. And this is going to take our world much closer together in this Aquarian age. Oh, thank you. It gives me so much hope and I feel so much love and so much gratitude. Thank you for all you are and do, all of you, for Theosophy, for the planet, for humanity, for everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I love you. And if you want to check them out, theosophy.online, the VCTS, the Virtual Center for Theosophical Studies. And uh, we'll hopefully see you there. Thank you all very much. I love you. I love you.